Hello, welcome back to Dry Creek Beekeeping. It's been about a month and a half since I've last posted a video, and I'm really sorry about that. I've been super busy with school and uh, also just like stress and stuff. I really haven't been motivated to make a video, but I'm back finally and yeah, let me give you a recap of what you missed in the month and a half. So, the Ada Hive has been combined with the Theta Hive, uh, and that is to, you know, have a stronger hive going into winter, because combining those two hives, those pretty weak hives, will make a stronger hive. That's the hope anyway. And also, as you may know, the Alpha Hive had problems with chalk brood, and unfortunately, the Alpha Hive did succumb to the Chalk Brood. So we went from having seven hives at the peak of the year to now only having four. And I will admit, that's a lot of that is my fault. I am still a pretty much like beginner to intermediate beekeeper. I don't really know what I'm doing some of the time. That fact really made itself known this year because there was so much stuff that I just had no idea how to deal with. But I've learned my lesson. Next year will be better. I hope. <laughs> Anyways, the game plan today is to move all four of the living hives into the beekeeping tent. And there they will stay over winter. So that that way snow isn't getting on the entrance and stuff like that. Anyways, sorry for the long intro. Let's get right into beekeeping. So this is what the bee yard looks like right now. Um, that is the Theta Hive. Then we have the Delta Hive. This is the Alpha Hive. It's dead. Beta Hive and Epsilon Hives. Over there is the beekeeping tent. There's a pallet in there. And that's what the beehives are going to be sitting on during the winter. First things first, let's start out with the Epsilon Hive over here, moving that into the tent. I have a feeling that this video is going to just be a lot of time lapses, so I'm sorry about that in advance. I'll try to find some cool music to put over the time lapses though. Hopefully it's still enjoyable. <laughs> That only took about 10 minutes, but the first hive is in the tent. Just have three more to go. The second hive is in there. Holy cow. If you want some context for how difficult this is, it is hard. A fully loaded hive like that can weigh like 160 plus pounds, probably up to like 180 with all the wood and stuff. I'm guessing these hives here probably weigh somewhere between like 120 and 160 probably more on the low end of that i would say but even just thinking of the minimum 120 pounds holy cow that is heavy if you're in crossfit and you've done like goblet squats then you'd know 120 pounds is a lot of weight and the way you're carrying these hives does not help they are super cumbersome <sighs> but those two are in there and I have two left to go. Hopefully my back doesn't give out before then. 
All right, and these are the two hives that are left. We've got the Delta Hive and the Theta Hive. I don't think I've ever made a video on the Theta Hive, but it does exist, so there you have it. Oh, and another thing that I forgot to mention, we had our first snow. In fact, we've had several snows. Um, but yeah, so I'm doing this really, really late in the year, like way too late. Normally I would have wanted to do this in like October, but I missed my opportunity. We had a really, really long uh, few weeks of extremely cold temperatures. And this is my first chance to actually do this. So that's why I'm doing it now. Again, normally I'd want to do this before the first snow, but anyway. <laughs> I'd say that's a pretty good amount of bees for getting through winter. are in the tent and yeah they're all ready for winter well not completely ready for winter yet there's still one more thing that I have to do real quick so all through this year this year I've been using jar feeders and these are just feeders that are jars with sugar water that have screw uh, holes in the top that the bees can eat from and I'm not going to be using these this winter because, frankly, they suck. They take up too much room. Instead, what I'm going to be using is a round rapid feeder. And this sort of works in the same way. It goes over the inner cover and the bees go up through this into here. But what's different is it can hold a lot more sugar water and it can fit in a honey super which takes up less room, so less cold air is getting into the hive. It's great. All you really have to do is set this little cup thing on top and then fill this with sugar water and it'll eat from this. And I believe you can also fill this with just normal granulated sugar too, which I'll probably do halfway through the winter is I'll exchange the sugar water for actual sugar because it seems like later in the winter, when it really starts getting cold, they just stop eating sugar water for whatever reason. So that's the plan. Now let's go ahead and get all of these round rapid feeders on these hives. All right, so that's on there. The bees are kind of freaking out right now. They're pretty mad at me. All right, and that's all set up and it has sugar water in it. So there we go. Oh, and if you want to buy these round rapid feeders, I do have the link to them in the description of this video. So you can go down there and buy some for yourself if you want to. I've never used them before, but from what I've seen, they work pretty good. All right, now I'm getting really tired, so I'm just gonna have YouTube magic fill up the rest of these hives. And there we go. Just like that, all the hives are done. You know, that was really, really easy. I should use YouTube magic more often. Anyways, for right now, the tent is going to stay open. I'm gonna leave that open until we start not seeing any more temperatures that are above 32 degrees 
And once those temperatures drop below that point, then I'll close up this tent. But for right now, they're fine as is. I'm pretty sure this winter is going to be a brutal one with not only temperatures, but also snow. So I'm not really sure what to think as for the survival of these hives. I'm going to stay pretty confident because I've, I've figured out what to do during winter. Winter is not one of those times I don't know really what I'm doing. It's pretty straightforward. It's just really slow and difficult in not the sense that it's confusing, but difficult in the sense that you don't have much control over what's going to happen. But as for videos of these hives, this is probably the last video of these hives that you're going to see until next spring. Or maybe halfway through winter, I'll do a midwinter update. But yeah, that's kind of it for them. During this winter, I am planning on continuing to make uh, videos. I'm planning on making one video every two weeks. That's the goal. Hopefully I can actually achieve that goal. As for what those videos are going to be about, it's probably not going to be very much like directly beekeeping relating, related stuff. But I do have some ideas. I'm thinking maybe some cooking videos with like bee products being what I'm cooking with. I might do some like informational stuff. I don't really know. I might even do a live stream at some point this winter. We'll see. But anyways, that's the end of the video. I forgot to mention it anywhere through this video, but thank you guys for 400 subscribers. I honestly never thought I would make it this far on YouTube because, you know, I'm not the most experienced person and it really, really, really means a lot. I mean, just earlier this year, I was only at 100 subscribers and now I'm here. Seriously, thank you guys so much for all your support. Anyways. Thank you for watching, and if you did enjoy the video, please make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video.